Today we have a cool hub for a Mac Mini that might actually work with an iMac or even a MacBook as well. Let me explain. All right, welcome back to the channel. So this could be a trilogy for me as far as doing product reviews of Mac Mini hubs like this, because I've done two other ones. I'll put the pictures of them up right here so you can see them. Search my channel if you want to check these other ones out. These are by different manufacturers. I don't want to get into those in this video though. I'm going to put those over here. This one's actually about a company called AGP Tech, A-G-P-T-E-K right here. And it's a Mac Mini hub. It's the model is MC25 Pro. It's the MC25 Pro. You can see it here. I'll show you some close-ups as I'm talking about it. And this thing's just really good because of the I.O. and it's got a little hidden secret in the back, which I'll get into in a second. And I'll talk about this in a second. So a couple different things that you want to kind of address here is if you look online here, this is Amazon right here. This is $79.99 for this hub. Now I'll get a couple of reasons why I like this. And, and then first, let me just make sure you guys don't make the mistake. You know, a lot of people do. This is $79.99. You can see it right here. They make another one that's very similar. It's right here, $69.99. This one only has one hard drive in it. That you it's capable of only having one hard drive in here, and it has you know no USB-C ports on the front of it. This one for $79.99 right here is the one you want. That's the one I'm reviewing, or product showcasing, because it allows for two uh, different SSD drives in there, one M.2, one SSD 2.5 inch, and it has a USB-C in the front as well, which we'll talk about. Overall, the reason I said in the beginning this could be good for um, you know an iMac or even a MacBook Pro or something or MacBook Air is because it's just a flat hub like this and it has those capability of having you know SSDs in there, a ton of space. I think one of them is capable of, of up to two terabytes and the other one's up to, uh, up to four. So I think you can get an extra six terabytes in this thing for all of your Mac devices. So on an iMac like this, this thing, an iMac could just sit on top of this. If you color matched it, I mean, get the silver version of the iMac, it could sit on here like part of the stand. It would look really elegant and it would work perfect. It has all the I.O. on the front, everything like that. If you had a MacBook like this, and again, if it was color matched to silver, you could literally just stick it on top of this thing like this or on the side, and it'll work just fine. So this hub works with any Mac here, as long as it's going to be a USB-C connection that goes into it. Uh, obviously not the older ones, but any of the new M series, this will work fine on. So just want to say, like, it's not for that. It's really for over here, you know, throwing a Mac Mini on it like this. And uh, you can see that this Mac Mini sits like that on top of it, or you can put the hub on top of it, and then you have all the I.O. on front. So that's really what this is for. And... Uh, but the reason I like this is for a couple different reasons, and that's what I want to talk about right now. So if we look at this, a couple things here. I like this because it's got so much I.O. compared to some of the competition for 79 bucks. It's got two USB-A over here, five gigabit per second, which is pretty nice. Then it's got a USB-A at 10 gigabits per second. You usually don't get that. It's got two SD card readers, the micro or the, you know, the small one and then the larger one, the, the normal SD. Those are built in. You'll get two of those as well, not just one. And then finally over here, you get a USB-C as well, which is going to be data and it's going to be full 10 gigabit per second. So you get tons of I.O. on the front of it right there. On the back, it looks like there's some stuff, but it really it's not. It's, it's just the plug that goes into the computer here, the host, it's USB-C plugs into your computer, and then the other one's basically to put some more power into this. So the reason you need that power, and this is where I want to kind of take a step back, is a lot of people you think you need, might need it for the hard drives, but I didn't, and, but you might, and depending on what you're doing. So you could actually plug in a power source into this. I think it's like up to, you know, 20 watts or something, and what it does basically is it helps give some power to the to the actual um, device here. Um, you don't, I tested this running two different hard drives, one M.2 drive and one 2.5 inch SSD in here, and it, it works fine. So it didn't need the extra power, no power needed. But if you're running a whole bunch of things that are power hungry off this hub, maybe you're charging things and doing a whole bunch of stuff, you might need that extra power source to help charge those other things or have those other things wake up. So it depends on how much you're using, but just using it like this, if I had everything else unplugged and using the SSDs as storage, I didn't need it. All right, really quickly in the box, they, they, they do give you a USB-C to USB-C cable here. You can see it. And then they also give you the other cable that goes from USB-C to USB-A for that power source. And you can plug it in back here to get some additional power. So it does come with that as well. Comes with the directions. Comes with this little piece here that, you know, obviously goes over the hard drives. They don't just sit like that. This piece goes over that. So that's one other piece. Comes with a screwdriver, some screws, some grommets, and then also I think a little heat shield, uh, heat tape that comes with it for, for the M.2 drive. The 2.5 inch won't get hot, but the, the other one will. So, um, but although I've had not a lot of heat issues with this, I just want to tell you that. So in my test here, I actually threw in a Team Group AX2. This is a 2.5 inch you know, 512 gigabyte SSD. You can throw in anything you want as long as it's 2.5 inch there. And then what it also takes in the back here, and I'll show you here, here's the actual 2.5 inch. 
But I threw in over here, this takes a NVMe drive, so an M.2 NVMe. It's not M.2 SATA, it's M.2 NVMe. You gotta make sure you get that. These are the faster ones, they run a little bit hotter. So I threw in this Lars drive, it's from Levin. I, I don't, you know, this is more of an inexpensive drive, so I'm not recommending this. I'm saying you can throw in anything, Western Digital SN770, you can throw in, you know, the, um, as long as it's uh, NVMe, you can throw in the Samsung 980 Pro. Stuff like that will work just fine in here. Obviously, this one does have a little bit of a heat sink on it, so it helps cool it. I have not run into a lot of issues with heating or anything like that. So, so far, so good. I mean, it does have a little case here that, you know, has a little shield on it with some holes on it, but that's really all to help you get with heat there. So you wanna use the heat tape or any type of, you know, extra stuff you have, like what this comes with on top of this drive as a heat shield, but that comes with the drive. If you do get a too big of a one though, you may not be able to close the bottom of it. All right, just for simplicity, I'm plugging this right now into my iMac because I don't have power source over here for this. So it works the same, it works on all, you know, all Macs, so it's no big deal. Um, long story short over here though, I have it plugged in over here and I had no problems. I did plug it into the Mac Mini before, so everything shows up on the drives. You have to format your drives. Once you plug the drives and you format them to APFS, Everything works fine there. But a lot of people were in some, well not a lot, but some people in the comments were saying like when the Mac goes to sleep, the drives go to sleep also and they don't come back up or something. I didn't have that experience at all. I put my computers to sleep. The drives still stayed mounted. They didn't unmount or anything like that. So overall it's been pretty good for me and everything's been working fine that way. All right, your mileage may vary depending on the drives you throw in this thing. I'm using inexpensive drives here. But the team group, the 2.5 inch SSD, let me go ahead and start a speed test here. On the hub, I was able to get about 360, somewhere in that range on the writes. And then on the reads, let me just see here, I was able to get 300, and look at that, 10, 311, somewhere in that range on the reads. So not too bad for a three and a half inch. And uh, you know, obviously, I'll, I'll get into what this is actually for in a second, you know, why you'd wanna pick this up. So you're not looking for speed here. Um, the other drive here, let me go ahead and open this up, is the Levin drive, now that's the M.2. Let me go ahead and select the right drive here. So here's the 11. Um, and let's go ahead and start this one. Now this is gonna be, this is capable of much faster, obviously an M.2 drive, NVMe drive, but this is gonna be limited by not only the connection, 10 gigabit per second, but also some overhead on the hub. So if you run this one as well, you know, you're gonna see about 740 on the writes, and then you're gonna see about 648, 650 in that range on the reads. So you're not gonna get the fastest speed. And that's not what this is for. So all this hub really is for is getting the extra IO, and then you also get about, you can put up into you know, about six terabytes of not the fastest, but fast enough storage. I mean, 750 megabytes per second is fast enough to do a lot of 4K edits and stuff, but it's really more for backing up files and doing various things like that where you need a lot of storage. So that's kind of what I use this for. I put this, you know, I move this around actually. I use this not only with Mac minis, but I'll use it for a MacBook if I'm using that. I'll just put it next to it. And again, you can use it on the iMac just fine like I'm doing now. It doesn't have to be under it. It can be in the side. It doesn't really matter. You get all the I.O. of the, the extra SSD cards, and it's kind of interchangeable between everything. You can see the speeds there. It's not going to be a Thunderbolt, you know, it's not Thunderbolt 4 or anything like that. You're not going to get 2,000 megabytes, 2,800 megabytes per second, but you are getting pretty quick 750 on the M.2. And I think you can get up to about 4, 450 if you put a faster drive in for the two and a half inch but I was only capable of getting about 350 in this test on the showcase but I only tried that one drive all right so at the end of the day do I you know do I recommend this and, and I always tell people this is a product showcase I've only had this for a little bit I've tested it and I liked all the features of it and, and the things that really people some people complained about it might be that they're old, using older Macs but I've tested this on a lot of the M series chip Macs and I didn't have any problems with the waking up and going to sleep and all that kind of stuff on the, on, the, on the discs. I had none of those problems. I didn't have any problems with overheating or anything like that, the way I've used it. So I'm just telling you, like, it's a product showcase. I can't give you a full long-time review. But overall, I like the product. And I've tested a few other ones out. Some of them have other problems, like they only have one disc or they only have slower I.O. This one has kind of the best of all worlds here for the price. $79.99 is not the cheapest, but it's you know still not the most expensive either. It's kind of like a good trade-off there, especially since you can use it if you think outside the box for other Macs or even PCs and stuff, as long as you format the drives in here correctly. So I just wanted to kind of showcase this product. It's not, you know again, a product that's gonna be eye-opening because I've done this before. It's just another choice in that trilogy if you're thinking about this. So when the M3 Mac comes out or the M3 Mac Mini comes out maybe in March, you'll have an option for adding some kind of cheap, maybe not the fastest storage, but good enough for most things and that's what I tell people. You don't always need that 2,800 megabytes per second. I'll talk to everybody soon. I hope you guys like these kind of, you know, just kind of me talking to you about these product showcases. I try to find these smaller products that are, you know, a little bit smaller. They don't get as much attention just to show people what's out there. So give me the like. Hopefully you can share the video and stuff like that. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.